Today, we're going to talk about the elements. Uh, a viewer named Jeff, I believe, uh, asked me to say something about the elements, describe them, explain a little bit what the elements are. His question was, what exactly do we mean by the elements? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. Uh, sort of like trying to describe to someone how to tie your shoes or describe color to a blind person. It's, it's so experiential um, and it's, it feels so close to me that putting it into words has been rather difficult to wrap my little brain around. But I will give it a try and I hope that this makes sense to you somehow. <laughs> um, so, the elements. Um, <clears throat> the elements are an arbitrary human construct. Um, in our trying to understand the universe around us and how it works, we have developed a very mechanistic approach to things. And by that I mean like clockwork, you know, all the little gears working together and ta-da, there's the universe. Um, so, we call some of these gears different elements and they work together to produce the universe, the uh, sensible universe, okay? So, we define, again, an arbitrary human construct. We define um, four different types of um, manifestation, four different factors that contribute to the physical world, every physical thing. Every astral thing, every mental thing, is made up of these four elements in this theory, okay? Um, and it's just one way of looking at the universe. It's the hermetic way. We define these four aspects of existence. Everything that exists is composed of different ratios of these four aspects we say. But, of course, the universe isn't mechanistic, um, so we then have the Akasha, which sort of <laughs> combines it all together and makes it one whole thing. Um, but, the four elements are the four components of existence. Let's just take that for granted. Um, there are, like I said, other Traditions, you know, there's a million different uh, opinions, a million different ways of defining the aspects of the universe. And this is a culturally um, uh, rooted ways of perceiving the universe and what's important. Okay, so we divide it into four, um, the four elements, the two primary elements are the fire and the water. Now, <clears throat> it's important in reading Initiation in the Hermetics of Theory section especially, and the other mentions of the elements along the way, um, to realize that Bardon, Barden is talking about two separate things. There's the principles of the elements, and then there's the elements, okay? The elements, by this I mean what we work with uh, in step three and four, etc., and five, the elements that we manipulate, we accumulate, we breathe them in, we project them, all that. That's the elements themselves. But the principle, principles of the elements are primarily what Barden talks about in the theory section, the elemental principles, okay? 
Now, <clears throat> the principles of the elements, I would say, are the essential meaning of the elements, okay? So they're very broad. Their effects are very broad. The elements, you know, were given in the exercises with the elements a very limited number of um, attributes that we work with, okay? So there's the fire elemental principle um, <clears throat> it's active, it's uh, angular, um, <clears throat> it's expansive, it's fiery, you know, it's radiant, it, um, <clears throat> it opens things, it connects things through openness, it's the enlivening force in all things. It's sunlight, okay? That's fire. But it's also the searing heat that completely desiccates things. Um, it's the flame that you know, breaks things apart. So there's two aspects of the fire. Principle, okay? <clears throat> The water principle is very much the opposite. It's cold and constrictive. Ooh, you know, it's magnetic. It's pulling everything together. It really pairs things down to their essence. It's, um, whereas the fire connects us through uh, openness, the water connects us to self. It isolates self. Okay? But it's also fluid. It penetrates things by seeping between and into and around. The fire just goes Wah! right through it. So these are the two root principles in everything. Fire and water. Water is the form. Fire is the force that fills the form. Okay. <clears throat> then there's air principle. Now air... <clears throat> really isn't an element in the same sense that fire and water are. Air is sort of <clears throat> the meeting point, the balance point between these two forces that, you know, they, they both, it, both the fire and the air exist within every form in the universe. It's all in mixture. Everything is a mixture of the elements, okay? The elemental principles. <clears throat> there is no pristine elemental principle in existence. I'll get to that again later. Um, <clears throat> so, they exist in unison. And there is a point at which the polar opposites of fire and water, you know, it's a continuum between the two. And that's the air. The air is that space um, between these two forces, the fire and the water. It's the mediator. Okay. It's uh, neither hot nor cold. Warm, in other words. It's neither wet nor dry. Moist. Okay. It's the, it's the space between the molecules that make up all form. 
there is more space in the universe than actual solid form. That's the air. It's the medium through which energy moves, non-particulate energy moves, non-particulate light, thought. It moves in the air between all the molecules. Okay? Then there's the principle of Earth. <clears throat> Again, it's not an element like the fire and the water, not even an element like the air. It, it is when both elements, fire and water, are working together. It's that unison of the elements, plus the air, obviously, because there's that uh, intermediary there. <clears throat> it's when all of that works together that we call Earth the joining together of all the forces. Of course, everything in existence is primarily Earth because it's all an admixture of the element principles. Okay. So, the best description of that elemental principle of Earth is working together. It's everything joined together, forming, you know, giving form. It's essential form, basically. <clears throat> that is what the Earth is. Okay, those are the principles. And they have an infinite number of shades and uh, manifestations and, uh, you know, too many to list. Um, Eventually, they're obvious in all things, but that comes later after you're working with the elements. <laughs> okay? Is that making any sense? Um, the experience keys you in to what's really going on with the uh, principle of the element. Okay? Now, how do we get from the principles to the elements, which are things, they're not principles. Well, they, they are principles, but they're the thing of a principle, which is primarily a mental construct, but it has astral and physical effects, okay? A principle is a mental thing. It's an essential meaning. Okay, but the elements are not just mental things. They're mental, they're astral, and they're physical. We can manipulate the elements on all three of these levels. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so how do we get from <clears throat> principles to elements? Now, it has to do with the technique that Barden uses in how he trains us to work with the elements in creative imagination. We use the creative imagination to create for ourselves a limited set of correspondences, of physical sensations um, that correspond with the elemental principle. So, with the fire, for example, um, <clears throat> we take heat and radiance. These are the two primary things that we create with our creative imagination, okay? Now, I talk uh, about, you do this often enough with the creative imagination, intention and will, and desire, and you will connect with the true element. That true element is the elemental principle. So that's another one of those magical formulas that, that Barden employs in initiation into Hermetics. Another part of the power of using the creative imagination with intention and will. Okay. So, 
we, when we do this exercise, we connect at the mental plane, like attracts like in the mental plane. So we connect on the mental plane with the elemental principle uh, by uh, uh, the law of analogy, if you will. And uh, we can convert that elemental principle into the element that we wield. Okay? We can convert that principle into the element of fire that we can accumulate, that we can project, etc. Okay. That's something that's uniquely human, I think. I think, I presume. <clears throat> this ability to convert a principle into a substance. That's important. Okay? We convert the principle into the substance by connecting with the principle, the creative imagination and intention, and then it converts it into a substance that we can manipulate and wield. So, <clears throat> the fire principle, <clears throat> we're basically boiling down into heat, radiance, um, yeah, basically heat and radiance. That's the, the characteristics of the fire element that we are going to be working with. It's <clears throat> the element that we are creating or converting, um, when we project it into something else, or we fill our own body with it, what that element substance that we uh, are working with does is it activates the elemental principle of the body that it's being projected into or accumulated into. So we project our element, our fire elements into an object or a body <clears throat> and the fire principle that is just naturally within that body is enhanced and activated, okay? That is how our elements work when we project them. We are enhancing what is already, well, pretty much what is already present, although we can through this process of projecting, project something that's <clears throat> barely there, shall we say. <clears throat> a negligible amount. We can sort of inject the, the element. But primarily, it's working with what is already there and enhancing it. Okay. So, <clears throat> the effect of the element that we make from the principle <clears throat> is lesser than the principle itself, in effect. <clears throat> but when we project it into a body, the full range of the principle is enhanced. So when you project the water element, you're not just making the object cold. <laughs> <clears throat> but cold and constriction are the primary <sighs> sensations of the water element, okay? And of the air element, it, it's a, uh, versus the air principle, okay? The air principle is spaciousness, <sighs> moderation, um, but the air element is a weightlessness and clarity and calm. Okay. 
Those are the effects of the air element, which when in, in, induced into a situation, a place, a person, an object, have the effects of the air principle on that object. So it's m m the object won't just levitate. <laughs> okay. And the earth element, its, <clears throat> its principle is bringing together, solidifying, uh, coalescing. Um, the earth element is weight, is heaviness. It's also sleep, darkness. And projecting the earth element has the effect of the earth principle more than of these sensations of heaviness and gravity, um, etc. Ah, so, also, <clears throat> how do the elemental realms relate to the elements? They don't really relate to the elements that we are creating. They pertain to the elemental principles. The best way to describe it, okay, we look at the universe in its, all the elements, in mixture, in everything, constantly around us, everywhere. But when we open our eyes, if we put a filter that filters out the air, the water, and the earth, all that we will see is the fire principle. And we are, in effect, in a universe of the fire principle. Because all we are seeing is the fire principle. That's the fire realm, the realm of the elemental being. Okay? It exists within everything, but it's, it's the filters that we put in front of it that, jeez. Yeah, I hope that made sense. Um, so to see the realm of the earth beings, the elemental earth beings, we have to look at the universe without the fire, the air, and the water. Then we see just the earth principle. Okay? It's still existing with everything else, but all we are seeing is the earth principle. Um, so, that hopefully <laughs> explains for you the realms of the elemental beings. Now we can uh, use the earth element, fill our body with the earth element, and then travel. This is one way in which we filter out all the rest and enter into the earth realm is by becoming that element itself. And in effect, that's our doorway into becoming the principle itself and seeing the principle, the elemental realm. Okay, let's see. Is there anything? As you pursue Barden's um, uh, exercises with the elements, and you begin to make contact, that contact with the elemental principle by employing the, the elements, uh, the, the creative imagination um, of the elemental uh, um, sensations along with your intention, and you make contact with the principle, all of this will make much more sense. Um, and that contact 
with the principle of the element, it teaches you what the element is, its actions, and you will then, you know, with time, see the effects of the elements everywhere and be able to discern within objects, you know, which element is predominant and etc. Okay? Now, in that work, Barden's exercises with the elements, he says that you can draw the elements from the universe. This doesn't mean that there is a universal supply of the element that we are creating, okay? There is a universal supply of the elemental principle. So when you're drawing the element, you're drawing the principle. <clears throat> that is what you are drawing from the universe, and you're converting it into an element. Okay? Or, you know, it, perhaps more advanced work, you can work with the principle directly, as opposed to needing that, that intercession of the, the element that we're creating. Okay. I think that is all I can say about the elements and the elemental principles at the moment. And I sure hope that uh, made some sense to you all. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.